the newest additions to the Nashville skyline, which you might call the shiny object, are shiny objects. Nearly a dozen glimmering glass towers have risen from the ground in what seems like a blink. It's glaring. <laughs> This is our first day here, and that's my impression of what Nashville will be. The brick and the old buildings and everything. So you can see parts of it, but there's a lot of flash. Yeah. With population comes, you know, change. And there's a lot of good changes from what I've been seeing. It seems like they keep springing up. Yeah, they all do kind of blend together. There's nothing much unique about them, like the old brick buildings that really stand out, right? I'm looking forward to seeing what the next one's going to be. The sun shining in them. I think it's so pretty. <laughs> Most of these buildings I don't think are going to have a long life. Maybe they'll last 100 years if they're lucky. Jim Hubler knows every structure in downtown Nashville inside and out. Across the street from us is an Art Deco building that was a hotel block up there's a, a nice Romanesque revival building that was one of the first department stores in Nashville. As a historian and curator, he helped stabilize and preserve our state capital. Built with stone, but the wrong kind. When you look around here, this isn't Nashville limestone. Nashville limestone is awful. So when William Strickland, to save money, built the capital out of our local limestone, after 100 years it was falling apart. So Governor Clement had all of the columns taken off of the Capitol, all of the pediments, all of the pilasters. When the sun is going down or early in the morning, look at it in a raking light and you can see the difference in the stone. History has shown us material matters. Yeah, glass boxes, they aren't made out of lasting material. No character, no soul, blah. <laughs> Not so fast. We wanted people to look at this building and say, now that is cool. This is probably the most distinctive of the shiny structures. You can think of it as a giant Jenga puzzle, but it's not going anywhere. In fact, the same developer is building three glazed structures right in the same area downtown. What we're selling is the views. I mean, that's we're here on the roof looking around. This is what folks want. It's the view, stupid. But in more ways than one, it comes with a price. Windows are necessary, windows are very important. The windows do let in light, but with that visible light, they're also letting in a lot of heat. You're gonna have six times as much conductive heat going through a window as you would a wall. And you know, that's the opposite in the winter time because those windows feel super cold. A lot of times it's actually more uncomfortable for the occupants. I mean, if you look around us right now, all the blinds are down, right? So we designed for this idea that, oh, well, these great views and these great windows and all this, but if it's not done in a functional way, it just gets defeated. You know, you'll see people around you in office buildings with, um, you know, paper stuck on the windows because that every day the sun shines in there and they can't see their computer screen or it gives them headaches. And, those are all visual comfort things that we try to provide feedback on, but that, you know, if you've got an all glass wall, there's nowhere to hide. The International Energy Conservation Code, in effect for Metro Nashville, technically limits the window to wall ratio at 30%. But builders push that envelope by proving added efficiencies in other areas. Technology right now for energy efficiency um, is, is fully mature. From the outside, it looks just like a vision glass, but you can see all the insulation that is on the inside of this glass. So this is what allows us to meet the energy model that um, all of our buildings need to meet. And then for us, we go a step further. We took incandescent lighting and went building to building to building looking at the reflection of the glass at night because at night our residents don't want to see like looking into a mirror they want to see the lights of the city 
and we found a particular window that gave us all the energy efficiency, but at night you can still see out. And not all glass is created equal. Take a look at the JW Marriott and the Grand Hyatt. Two buildings that aren't that old, but apparently have some problem with glass. Well, there's, there's also a reason for that. Testing the limits of glass adds a big expense. Uh, the word is heat soaking. The glass manufacturers put the glass in a tank and run it to very cold, to very hot, back down to very cold. There's been buildings, I don't want to mention names, but where there's been, you know, dozens of pieces of glass essentially explode that they did not heat soak the glass. With a shiny skyline, it's not easy being green. Manufacturing all of that glass takes a lot of energy, and it can be bad for birds. And all this construction means more debris. Nashville's Zero Waste Plan, written in 2019, recommended that builders pay a deposit to ensure a certain amount of construction and demolition recycling is done. The county's demo dump has about five years capacity left. Well, the city decided against deposits, saying the system is likely not the best fit for Nashville. They opted for a construction and demolition reporting program, but that didn't start until last July. And this project, the Amazon Tower, Asurian Building, and Grand Hyatt were exempt from the requirement. They were already underway. I think glass is gonna be here for a while, yeah. Uh, until we get really serious about uh, performance-based energy goals, one of my colleagues is sort of famous for saying that even the dumbest of the three little pigs didn't build his house out of glass. The glassification of Nashville. That may be what the 2020s will be remembered for. Jim Hubler is watching and waiting for something as intentional and enduring as the LNC Tower. It was the tallest building between Washington, Miami, and Houston in the entire southeast. This, this is just a crown jewel of Nashville's uh, 20th century architecture. 